perhaps I'd, uh, well, I'd like to welcome everyone for joining us today for our second uh, monthly town hall session um, because we're not able to meet in person at the moment for our usual quarterly member meetings. We've started doing these online sessions and webinars just to uh, be able to stay in touch with you all. And um, today we've got uh, the authors Karim Boramans and Marie Geukens joining us who've published the book Expert Partner, Staying Active and Finding Work, uh, which is all aimed at uh, the trailing spouse and offering practical advice to um, how you can make your, your partner's assignment work for you too. Um, both are experienced expats. Uh, Karim is currently in Mali and uh, Marie, you are leaving for, was it Paris soon? No, no, um, I wish. No, no. <laughs> we don't know yet because the decision is not made, but we will leave this summer to a new posting. And, uh, but it will not be Europe for sure. Okay. Yeah. So it could be anywhere. Could be anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. We have a Seychelles are nice this time of year. <laughs> it will be a nice surprise for Christmas. I hope they will decide before Christmas and then we have our Christmas gift saying where we go. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The summer. yeah, that's the plan. Exciting stuff. Well, um, lovely. I think we, uh, I'd, I'd like to hand over to you two and um, we'll do a short presentation about 20 minutes. And then after that, we're open for questions and uh, answers and any points that you'd like to raise or talk about. Um, we hand over the floor to, uh, to you, Marie and uh, Karim. Okay, Thank then you. I started to... Oh, Karin, maybe you want to say something before I, I do the yes. sharing? Yeah. Yes, maybe we just tell a little bit who we are before we, we start uh, sharing our PowerPoint presentation. So, uh, my name is Karin Bormans. Hmm? I'm a Flemish, coming from Ghent, uh, but living already for uh, more than 30 years abroad. Uh, starting the first posting in uh, Kuwait, so that was quite, uh, it's quite some time ago in 88, where we first had our uh, hardship posting because Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait when we were there. But we're not going to talk about this. We are going to do talk about what we did with our professional uh, life during this expatriation. So I'm the partner of an expat, of a diplomat, following him already more than 30 years from one posting to the other. I'm also a mother, uh, also teacher. Uh, I also worked at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Belgium as a family officer. This is a support person for the diplomats and their families that uh, the, we, the Belgian uh, ministry, sends abroad and how we can uh, support these families when they have to get uh, a new posting. Like when Marie is going uh, uh, next summer, she will also again get uh, training with a, a family officer who is now doing this job because I'm not doing the job anymore. It's like for what to do with your health care, uh, what to do with if you want to work abroad, what to do with uh, your move, how does it go, all these practical things. That's a little bit of the job of a family officer, but also the personal support for a family who is in crisis, for example. So I've done this job and it was during this job that uh, the model of uh, the book started. And this is also the way that uh, I got to work together with uh, Marie because she, one of the workshops that I gave uh, Marie attended and uh, she was so enthusiastic about the model. She was so convinced about, about it. And uh, it was my husband actually who said, when you should write a book and said, I can't write a book. No, I'm not going to write a book. But Marie was so convinced of it and she is a good writer. So she started as my ghost writer. And slowly during the process, she became the co-author of the book. And so then we did it together. So that's a little bit me. I'm now at this moment in Mali, Bamako with my husband. So probably this was, will be our last assignment. Afterwards, we will go back to headquarters and then my husband will retire and then we will have a whole new chapter of our life. So Marie, to you. Oh yeah, exactly. So that, it was a very nice uh, encounter when I met the model of Karin. It, um, we decided uh, to write this book because we think it could be a real value for expat partners, although the model is, you will see it in a minute, very simple. 
I myself was, I'm also a spouse of a diplomat and, uh, but we did not travel that much. We went to Budapest and to Syria and to Ottawa. And in two, since 2005, um, we are back in Brussels and I was able to develop a more or less normal uh, career path. It's not that normal because I was always thinking that within three years we will move again and we will, and so I didn't really was super ambitious or I didn't make really a plan. Um, and that's also something that, um, that maybe I should not have done or I would have been more conscious of the plans I could have made if I would have had this model before. And that's why I was so convinced of the, of the worth and the value of, of, of this book. So in the meantime, I um, studied also journalism and I uh, met you, some of you who are here this, this afternoon already uh, when I was uh, the PR for Friends of Flanders, which was a, um, yeah, a television program to introduce expats to Fl uh, Flemish people and to introduce Flemish people to the expats. So that was also a time that I was uh, very involved with uh, Abra because you could reach out to, to the public we, we aimed for. And now we do actually the same. So I'm very grateful that we can have this talk. Um, I'm working currently now for Marie Claire, the magazine. Uh, I'm the editor in chief for the French and the Dutch um, copy. So, so um, we had a hard time with COVID, but I think we can, I hope that we are still, um, that we will still publish the, the magazine uh, in, instead of 12 times, it will be 10 times a year, but still we, we survived COVID up till now. So that is a good thing. And anyway, this is an ending uh, job for me because in June I will, um, yeah, I, uh, I hope I will not retire, but I will quit the Marie Claire and uh, prepare the move with my husband. And we think that end of August or September, we will go somewhere. So exciting times as Fiona already said. Uh, I'm the one in charge of the um, of the PowerPoint presentation, and it's my first time. So, uh, and I'm also 50 this year. So let this be an excuse if I am not very agile in doing all this. And then I give the word again to Karin. Okay, thank you, Marie. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh... <laughs> We started to, to work together uh, uh, and uh, it was so nice working together with Marie and to develop this book because without uh, uh, this good teamwork, we would never have this result. As I said, as a family officer, uh, I gave workshops uh, to partners and uh, you, you meet partners in your professional life as a, because as a relocation officer or in the other, or uh, I see there are also people from schools and banks uh, between you, you uh, banks who send out expats as well. Uh, you will know that an expat will be happy when the family is happy. It has a big impact on how the family, uh, how the expat is functioning at the office because if the spouse at home is not happy because she or he can't work or is sitting there and feel, feels bored, there is any, the, the expat goes home with always this stressful person at home, there was a huge problem. So we, uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we also started to, to be uh, proactive to help the people to do well, uh, what they can do if they want to find work. And so I then developed this uh, model and uh, I'm a teacher. And if you want to explain to somebody what does it to you if you lose your job, then you have to think about, but what is it to have a job? What does it mean for me in my life work? And then we had this analysis of these aspects of what it is. So, and as I'm a teacher, I just used a very clearly easy model, just a cake, traditional one. And we started to analyze it and to see what does it mean to have a job? What do, what do you lose if you stop working? And from starting from that point, if you know what you, you lose, if you stop working, then you will know better 
what you gain if you start working again. So this process, I hope that your clients can help. It can help your clients to find uh, their way in making their priorities. But first we have to see what are these aspects? What is work for you actually, for anybody who works in this modern contemporary society? So Marie, I give the floor to you and you will explain the five aspects. Yeah, so as you can see, um, the aspect, there are five aspects. All Marie, aspects can, you put are... it, can you put it on, uh, uh, how do you call this in English? On the bottom left, you see uh, the third point, the third button. Yeah. That one, yes. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I didn't know where, where to push. Good, thank you very much. So you have the cake. And you have five slices and those slices are next to each other, which means that every slice is equally worth. They are equally valuable. And normally in, in, a, in a Western country or in Belgium, uh, all the aspects come together within one job. And the first aspect is salary. And a salary consists out of two aspects. And the first aspect is, it is a revenue. It is a, um, yeah, it gives you an income with which you can pay your bills, with which you can save for doing nice things. And another aspect is it gives you social recognition. It gives you appreciation for, for what you're doing and for what you have done. And um, where is the difficulty come in? The difficulty comes in when you give up your second salary. So you don't contribute anymore to the house or the, or the yeah, and, and your partner becomes the only one who, um, who, who earns money and then you have this uh, inequality. And I think for within a couple, this financial um, dependency can become a stress factor or a frustration factor. So it is very important for couples to talk about what's going to happen. And you have to think as an expat partner also very well and very maybe a bit self-centered what is going to happen when i give up my salary um and then have a very open conversation with your partner about are we going to split your revenue 50 50 yes or no are we going to open a, a bank account and are we still having two bank accounts or are we going to have a joint bank account what will happen when i come back to my home country and then i have to have a job that is less paid because i have this career break these are tricky questions and they can be quite sensitive, but we believe that they are very important to ask yourself and your partner before you leave. A second aspect of a job is of course, financial and social securities. And we have them here in Belgium and your clients, they, they come to Belgium. So if they find a job, uh, normally they should have health insurance. They should have, they, I don't, I don't know if there is a possibility, you know that probably better than, than I do, is, are there possibilities to acquire a pension? Um, there are holidays for sure, but for instance, is a diploma um, recognized? Do they recognize diplomas here in Belgium? I don't think so. So you have these things also um, to think about before you leave and to talk about with your expat. And Marriage, for instance, will marriage help you to have certain securities guaranteed when you are overseas? These, this is an aspect that it is arranged while you are in your home country and you will have to leave it maybe or you have to consider it as a, a, another part before you leave and make arrangements so that these things are covered more or less. You can do that with uh, insurances, um, yeah, or see a lawyer or a notary and discuss these things. Another aspect, and that is very personal, are your professional skills. And it is actually the aspect um, which is the most important for expat partners to find a job because you need skills to be attractive on the labor market. And um, there is always the idea of coming back and 
it's the first thing that you send to a, to, to a future job is your CV where your professional skills are on. So most of the expat partners who want to work, they want to work because they want to update their professional skills. Now, very close to that is also um, social context and structure. This is what a job also can mean to you and it's also what your job gives to you. Um, and we have seen now in COVID times how important it is to have social contacts. Um, it is also seen already in, in surveys and in studies that the expat partners who are integrated the best have local contacts. And of course, now with digital, um, with digital society moving very, very fast forward, we can see also that it gives expat partners an enormous um, range of possibilities to work from home. Um, and also more and more uh, employers are confident that that works. But still, you will need your social contacts to integrate into, into your new environment. And of course, it does not have to come from a job, but then it might be interesting to have activities outside a job. But Karine will work on that later on, will we'll tell you how important it is to, yeah, to see these elements apart and, um, and to value them and to prioritize them uh, in order to broaden up and to widen up your possibilities to work abroad. And the last one, is identity. And that is a quite uh, complex notion, as everybody knows. But um, it is so often that when you ask, what do you do? Or um, that, that, you are, that you answer with, I am. I am a doctor. I'm a journalist. I am, I'm a nurse. I, I am a, a lawyer. I, I'm a manager. I'm the CEO of. And so your identity falls almost together with, uh, with what you do, with, with your job. And this can be a very sensitive question sometimes when asked to expat partners, because a job became so important in our daily lives. But of course, your identity is much more, is much more than only a job. It is um, the values you have for yourself. It is um, the way that people look at you and what you can mean for society. It's all the roles you take up in your life. You are the child of and the sister and a friend and a colleague and so on. And it's also, um, it's also determined by how you want to make an impact on society and on the people that you love most. So there is a lot, these five aspects, they come with a job normally. But they won't come obviously or as an, as an obvious thing uh, when you go abroad. But if you can see them apart, then you can widen up your possibilities to find a job abroad. And that is what Karin will explain more in detail from now. OK, thank you, Marie. Yes. So we used to see work as, as a whole, as if you find a job that you get salary, you get your securities, of course, you develop your skills, you have your structure that it gives and your colleagues and the contacts and you immediately have your identity if you have a job in our modern uh, Western society. So if you go abroad then and suddenly it's it's not there. We're not not yet met, Marie. Okay. Wait, 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 wait a little bit. Uh, I'll give a sign. Okay. <laughs> so, so we want to have it normally as one cake, but if if you can see there's different pieces of work, maybe we can border up our minds. And this is something that I learned actually living in Africa, that people in Africa they don't always have all these aspects if they have a job. So if you go abroad, and if for example, yes, next slide, Marie. Okay. If you find maybe a job where you get really no social, social security or no pension plan at all, but you find a job 
and you say, okay, this is this is what I want. I will develop my professional skills, and I, I am paid, and I get my structure and identity. But for the rest, it doesn't give me much. Why not take it? If you're in a position that you can find other solutions for this financial and social securities, if you can make an agreement with your uh, with the experts about what to do if you don't get a good pension plan with the job you have abroad, but you can compensate it in another way to a marriage contract or whatever, then you feel then that solution to find somewhere else. You don't have to find a solution for that aspect to doing a job. Or, next one. Or maybe you can save an, I don't need the salary. Or even if the salary is extremely low, that can be in a, in a country like in Africa, maybe I'll take that job because all the rest is there. I develop my professional skills, I have my identity, and I really need this structure and this, uh, this social context, but it's so badly paid or voluntary work can fit into this, that you're not paid at all. Or people sometimes choose to go and study again. It is even okay, I will not earn any money. I found a solution for my fin financial and social security in another way. So maybe we can make then a choice over there. Or maybe for you, Next slide, Marie. Maybe for you, the salary is important. You really want to have that salary. But you don't find the job that fits completely with all the aspects. And you find maybe a job that you say, okay, I'm paid. I get financial and social securities. I have structure, but mm -hmm. I, I really, it's, it's below my level. And I really can't identify, but for me, having a salary is so important. I'll take up that job. Why not? Yes, Marie, <laughs> next one. So what we say is what you say from this is not my priority, you put in the fridge. What's your priority? You keep on your plate. And you will focus on these aspects when you're looking for a job in a, on a job market that's completely different than where you used to live. Because language skills can play a, a huge role if you have to take up a job. Maybe uh, that's why you can't find a job where you normally would have a specific amount of salary. Maybe we'll have this time to have to lower. But if you say, from, okay, I'll go for these priorities. These are important for mine and the others are put in the, in the fridge. You can feel good about it because you know what you're looking for. It's your choice at that specific moment, at that posting. And the next posting, you can change. Or back home, you maybe you, you can have them all again on your plate. Yes, next slide. Or maybe you decide on the posting, just not to work and you put completely work in the fridge. That's a good choice as well. You say, when I just want a time break, I want to enjoy the country or I need time for, for my family. Why not? Yes, next slide. Or you decide for no, I really need all the aspects. Some partners will be able to fulfill really their completely their professional career during the whole expat peri uh, period of the, of the expat. Few do, I must admit, a lot of young people I see they're really very well doing it. And I also see more and more expats or uh, having that they're both expats. And then it's sometimes turn uh, from the one expat and then the, uh, the partner will be uh, the next time and the next posting will get priority in finding work. 
which is a good choice as well. What's important is that you focus or that your clients, because it's not for you, it's more for your clients, that they learn to focus, what do they need? What is my priority at this time in my life? If I want the whole cake, I'm limited. If I say, from, okay, I'm happy with a few pieces of the cake, the partner will have much a bigger choice. Okay, Marie, up to you. Yeah, so it is very important to, to know for yourself, what are my priorities? What, what do I look for into a job? And what is for me the most important slice to keep on my plate? And therefore we also put in our book a lot of questions, open, open ending questions so that you can really have to think about your priorities. Another exercise which we did was we wrote down um, within our lifetime, what was the priority at what moment in our life? Because it is not something you, you are not stuck or anything. We just, we really want to say also that you can change, that you can have career switches, that you get actually quite some possibilities. And it is not, it's not a terrible thing to have a patchwork career where you have done different things because in every job you will have, you will develop skills you can use for another job. Um, and then, so the second part of our book is actually the exercise we did for ourselves. How did we prioritize in our lives? Well, I didn't do that very consciously, to be honest, because I didn't know that model yet. So it was a very good exercise for me to understand why I made certain choices. And I always give um, this, these two simple examples. So in the first example, it was my first real posting was in Syria. And um, I really lost myself. I really became the, the wife of my husband and the mother of my children. And I had uh, no idea who, who actually I, I was. So I was very much um, looking for a job where my values were, were, where I could explain my values or express my values, where I could have um, the feeling that I was necessary or why I was needed or whatever. And then I, I really found through my network, but still I had to be very pushy, I have to admit, a very interesting job at UNHCR in Damascus. And it was possible because we had no, um, I could work there as a spouse of, uh, of a diplomat, which is also something that is not uh, possible in every country. And so this, this identity thing was very, very important for me, although I did that job only for one year and a half, and then we went away again. And actually I could have made it my mobile career if I would have been courageous enough to go to UNHCR Canada and say, hi, here I am, and I can do when I want to do this and so on. But I, I did not do that. I, um, I put my family first, they were really, <laughs> sounds a bit like Trump, but, um, uh, I, yeah, for me, that was then at that moment in Canada, it was for me very important that the kids really did well at school and integrated uh, well in their French school and so on. And um, yeah, it, 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 the household and, and, and um, the settlement took a bit more time than expected. So I, I was not into finding this kind of job and, and pursuing a career at that moment in my life. That is something really, a detail actually happened in my life. I, I, it is so funny sometimes how things can, can turn out. I saw a Torton pole in Canada, which I really liked. And my husband thought it was super kitsch. So we had, of course, this, this agreement. Like I really wanted that thing and I, I, I thought it was beautiful and it was a, 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 a big symbol of, of our stay in, in Canada. And my husband, no, no, not one hair on his head thought of buying it. And, but I was 100% financially dependent uh, at that moment. So I found a job. And I modestly say I was really overqualified to be a secretary at the Dutch embassy. 
but I, I really was, and it was a terrible experience, to be honest, but I had my money. And after four months, I had enough money to buy my totem pole and I quit. And, um, and, I, and it's in the living room ever since, so I, I'm very happy. So at that moment, salary was the only priority I had uh, to, to find a job. And it was also difficult to find a job in Canada because there was no uh, bilateral agreement between Belgium and Canada that spouses would work. So considering the circumstances, I am quite happy that it, it, uh, it went as it went. And, um, and then I had small jobs as teaching because I liked that I am a, te I'm a teacher as a profession as well. And um, yeah, and, and, and for the rest, it, th these are just to explain you what your priorities can be and that they can change over time. And um, yeah, and, and, and that there are many, many possibilities and that you have to go out there and go out of your comfort zone and network and be and be creative and um, and courageous also i think it's it's important for a partner for an expat partner um i think they are sometimes more courageous than the the expats themselves but that's my idea um let me see yeah so there there is something maybe you can tell your expat partners make this exercise once it's such an easy model uh, five aspects that are really obvious parts of a job but it gives you a lot of insight in what thrives you in what were your um yeah your goals at a certain moment in, in time and then there is a thing called flow and i i leave karin to explain you what that means okay <laughs> thank you marie yes so also working uh there is another aspect that we can add to the five. We can stick to the five and analyze only the five, but there is a sixth actually. A sixth, and this is what we call flow. Flow in the same meaning uh, as uh, Mihai, Chikchen Mihai, an Amer Hungarian American uh, uh, psychologist developed this uh, concept. And flow is something, it's a state of mind that you get when you're fully concentrated in an activity, the activity is very clear, it is defined, and you get feedback afterwards. You know what you're doing. It's challenging, but it's not too difficult. You can manage it, you have a feeling of control. You forget about yourself. You forget time. You forget your worries. So you're really focused and you're not in the emotion. The emotion you will get afterwards. Then you will be happy that you've done this or that, but you're really very concentrated. This state of mind, he calls flow. And a lot of people have flow during their work. So that means if you stop working, and if you, if you had flow always, or not during every minute, of course, at uh, your job, but quite a lot of time during your job, you also lose your flow. That can make you very unhappy. So flow, we added as a sixth aspect. So this is the third part of the book where I'm talking about. I'm not going too much uh, deep into it, uh, but it's an interesting aspect of the next slide, Marie. Yes, so we, we've put uh, flow as uh, the sixth one because it can be, can explain a lot to uh, uh, partners or expats. I learned this uh, uh, concept during a workshop in Paris, especially for coaches for expats and their partners. And there I learned that to be happy, you need actually three things. You need, first of all, pleasure in your life. And that's what a lot of expat partners can have because there was a lot, enough money you can go in a restaurant or buy, uh, do shopping. Now with COVID, it's of course much more complicated, but you can have a lot of pleasure, but you have to be very careful with pleasure because if you go in a restaurant every day, you don't enjoy it anymore. 
And the second aspect that you mean uh, need to be happy is uh, meaning something that me means something in your life. And we all have the first for most people, the most important thing in their life, meaning is their family. So it's very few people don't have anything to fill in. And uh, in, uh, meaning it can also be your job, of course. But a lot of partners of expats, even if they give up their job, they do have pleasure and they do have meaning, but still why are they then so unhappy? The desperate housewife, as we call it. Because they lack flow. If you don't have this state of mind anymore, you feel bored, you feel empty. So if you get it at your job and it goes away, the job goes away, they will have to find another way of filling in your flow. And maybe you can find it in your job and so then you can keep it on your plate, but maybe you will find a job where you don't have flow and then you can have flow during your, uh, in, during your hobbies, a lot of people get it when they play music or when they go gardening or and maybe they have a job but they say, well, it's a bit boring for me, but I have a salary, it gives me an identity, I develop skills, but it's not really what I, I really love. Then it's fine and we call these people flexible flow because they can look for a job that they have uh, on, uh, they can look for a job but they don't need flow and they can look for flow during their free time. And then we have the other ones, the central flow people that they say, well, no, every activity I do, I need flow. It's central. I can put maybe salary aside, but not flow. So this is the third part of the book. We are not going further into it. It gives a little bit an idea of how we can help expert partners to find their way with all these different elements, what works give. And for me, the last part is very important. That's why that we did add it, because it's something that <clears throat> uh, partners of expats really um, experience a lot abroad. Up to you again, Marie. Are there any questions? <laughs> I think that we, well, we, I, um, the, the last remark I want to make, it's also the last remark we make in our book, is that um, we really address ourselves to the expats and tell them, please take your partner seriously, even if she only has or he only has hobbies. I mean, uh, it's, it's not an, ex I mean, yeah, it is um, sometimes very sensitive, but I think that experts should be aware of uh, the consequences uh, their choice have with going abroad on the partner and on the family. So please, uh, we say to the, the, the experts, have respect for anything, any decision that your partner makes. And um, but with that, we, um, we end our book and, and we are open for questions now. Please feel free. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, uh, Marie. Yes, um, I. Uh, that, that's great. It's very, very true, right? Because I think it's something like seventy-four percent of uh, assignments that end early are, are due to unhappy spouses. If I'm not mistaken, uh, it's it's a very, very big number, at least. Um, yeah, so no. it's, yes. yeah, no, it's Sam from NetExpat. If I can, if I can just jump, uh, jump in, if, if Karine and Marie are happy. First of all, great presentation and, and thank you so much because it brings uh, truth to, to us at NetExpat. I, I don't know if everybody knows who we are, but that's what we focus on is, is uh, partner assistance and supporting the relocating partner at a global level. And we recently did a survey uh, with EY a couple of years ago, which we're, we're due to renew any, any soon, as soon as COVID is over. But I just wanted to share a few figures with you because I think they will help um, reinforce what Marie and um, Karim were saying is that, so in terms of the, the number one reasons of assignment rejection, you're very close, Fiona, is 79%, uh, especially for females. So 79% of females who are the actual expat 
refuse to go on assignment because they feel that their, their male partner uh, will find it difficult to adjust and find a job. A little bit less when it's a male partner, but that's give you an idea in terms of um, the female partner. Um, you mentioned Marie and Karine about how the, the partner typically works. A lot of partners nowadays work. Well, 77% of relocating partners are actively, um, are active professionally before they go on assignment. So you can imagine how important for them, as you said, uh, it would be for, for them to be able to continue their, their profession. Uh, to give you some more figures, because you mentioned the, the money, um, Karine and, and, and Marie, again, 69% uh, of people say that uh, the dual income is very important for them. So 69% want to be able to continue both of them having uh, uh, money. Uh, in terms of split family, which I, I don't think we mentioned, uh, maybe in the foreign office it's a little bit less uh, relevant, but you do find that a lot of families that the part that ends up going on assignment without the family because they, they feel that the family won't be able to uh, adjust. That leads to 90% of those people who go on a split family, so who go without their partners, end up having a failed assignment. So it just reiterates just how important the family uh, family um, wants to, you know, needs to, to move. So those are some figures. If people are interested in having a copy of the survey that we did, let me know and I can pass it on to Fiona because uh, I think it's, it's a really good survey that we not only surveyed HR, but we, we also surveyed the actual relocating partner and the expats to see just how important partner assistance is. So um, I'd be happy to circulate if you feel that that would be interesting. Absolutely. Yes, please, Sam. Uh, yeah? I'd, I'd be much obliged. Yes, please do. So uh, very much in line with what you were saying. Yeah. Yes, we, we do cite uh, the survey because I uh, we uh, you sent it uh, before when I was working as a family officer. So you yeah. shared it. So that was very good, and uh, we do use those figures also in the book because it, it is important. And about the split family, this is something that we see here a lot in uh, Monaco, as this is a posting where it's it's a little difficult with this COVID situation because a lot of people took up this assignment because they get a lot of tickets back home. And so, but now with COVID flying yeah. up yeah. and down, it gets very complicated. Yeah. So a lot yeah. of them feel now stuck here. Because, okay, we, we get three or four tickets a year to go back home, but now home, but now we, like we, we don't want to go to Europe at this moment. No. We're not going to use the ticket. So I think this is a very complicated situation because a lot of split families, we, we, we see this here, a lot of expats here are without, and even like for the UN here, it's non-family posting, so they're not even allowed to bring their families. Yeah. And I think Marie, the, the point you made about how sometimes the, 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 the partner is braver than the actual expat, it is totally true because you know, the, the expats, they arrive on assignment, they have a job to go to, they have networks that they can make very easily, whereas the family, the, the, the wife or the husband is stuck at home, and especially COVID, it was very, very difficult for all our clients because they arrived on assignment thinking that they were going to build a new life for themselves and then suddenly find themselves at home, stuck without absolutely no support, no network. Um, we talked about home homeschooling early on, these, these poor partners that uh, suddenly found themselves in, in small apartments with three children screaming, screaming their head off because they couldn't go out. Um, it's definitely, definitely a big, big pressure on the partner. Difficult situation is also something that I lived myself because when COVID started, actually I was promoting the book in Thailand, uh, then flying back home. Uh, I got COVID from French tourists in Thailand. So when I arrived back home, I got sick. Oh, uh, sick stuck in Belgium. Then here the borders closed. My husband here, so I could not come back. Uh, so uh, the borders only opened in August. My husband came for holiday. During his holiday, we had here then a military coup. So then I could not go back with him because it was not safe. And so then I waited to a month and so I'm only back since September. So we were split for seven months. No, it's not easy at all. That's very tough indeed, absolutely. This is just one story, huh? because I, I am a member of quite a lot of expert groups and uh, I hear a lot of these stories. And also what I 
for example, I know families here, they've just sent their uh, kids 18 years old, for, for example, studying in Canada. So they're 18, they arrived on the other side of the world, the parents are here, the kids are there, they get only online lessons. Mm. And so it's very difficult to get to know people who are living there to get, so they they're depressed often and then they call back home, home which is here then. Parents can't go and visit them or support them. No, this is, that, especially that age group I find for expats very difficult. If you just sent your 18 years old studying abroad at the other side of the world, that's not easy. No. Absolutely, I think the social aspect is, is hugely important. As uh, I think Marie said earlier, we, we, we've all sort of come to realize quite how much we actually rely on our colleagues and co-workers and clients that we meet just even for a, a certain amount of contact. And, and as soon as that falls away, there's, there's this huge gap. Uh, and I, I think that's pretty much for everyone. Mm. Very much. I also wanted to add about the book, now we'll come back to, to the book after these uh, expat stories and how difficult it is uh, for the COVID, uh, but it, uh, it is reality, mm -hmm. is uh, all the stories that we uh, mention in the book are authentic. We just change the names and the places, but all the examples that we give in the book, we, re we really have seen mm -hmm. this in real life. And I think that Partners of experts are becoming very creative. I really admire the young generation now. They use also modern technology to stay professional active. It's for us, it's a, a aha book. It's not a big book. It's really, it's a tiny one. It's only, I think, I have it here with me about 200 pages, not, not even uh, yet, but it's, so it's, it's not a thick book. And uh, so you have it with it is, it's so actually a really nice read. The and, the cakes and, things like that. and yeah. it's so that you can read it very easily, quickly, you go through it and you have just the idea, aha, uh -huh, that's it. I can do something with this model. And I uh, gave it here to quite a lot of uh, my friends here in Bamako as a present. And even the French speakers here, where I, I gave to several French speakers, and they say, okay, the English is really not too difficult. We can read it, we can do something with it. So even you can recommend it to French uh, speaking uh, expats, uh, they do have you know, a certain level of English, but uh, they are quite enthusiastic here in, uh, in my Bamako about it. Other questions? I, I like it uh, very much, uh, uh, Karin. Uh, uh, it's, um, as you said, it's, it's a simple. Uh, uh, but it's very important to to check it out. And I like the fact that indeed, if you move between postings, uh, if you are a career expat, then it becomes even more interesting because uh, the situation uh, and the pieces of the five or six that you take in one country, uh, if you go to another country, you can change them uh, in function of, of uh, your wishes or the situation in that new country and so on and so on and so on and, and that can help you really better understand and organize uh, your your work life i think uh, it's it's very interesting um one because it's it's uh, it's a uh, a correct but simple model uh, and uh, you can use it throughout the whole career and all the moves thank you one thing you said, Marie, was, which was very interesting as well, is, is the fact that for some of these partners, it's, it's about remaining marketable uh, and not necessarily, not necessarily the, the money side of things, but going from one posting to another. And I think that's particularly true for, for you guys, because a lot of uh, private clients, they do tend to go on assignment for a couple of years and then they go home and it might be three or four years before they go on assignment again so they can go back to their career. Whereas in my experience with the foreign office, because uh, we, we work a lot with the UK foreign office, they just constantly go from one posting to another. And then 20 years down the line, they return to the UK and, and they feel they've given up their career for 20 years. And, and, and what now? So it's, it's very important about remaining marketable. Absolutely. And especially yeah. in, area, in countries where you guys tend to send people, it's not always easy to work there. It's not as straightforward with work permits and things like that. So... You need to stay very creative. 
Yeah, flexible. That's the yeah. new uh, word. Yeah, yeah and, and innovative. But um, yeah, I, but I think the strength of the model is the, this idea and this this uh, knowledge. The, um, how you say the insight that you don't need everything. The moment you can leave that idea mm. of I need and a salary and securities and developing my yeah. skills and I need a strong nice job with a strong identity and I need my social context and structure if you can then it will be very difficult to to, to have and find a job every time you are on a posting or or even when you go back but the, I think the strength of the model is that please leave let it go let this the strict definition of work go and pick and choose whatever you like and 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 then a posting becomes an enrichment and an asset then you can have you know so many people here in belgium want a career switch and they never dare and actually we get it on a silver plate you go away you go abroad and you can do what you like i, I mean it, that could be a positive way of looking at things and we need more positivism. And, and I think so many people are stuck here also in their job. We don't need to be stuck in a job. And as you say, very often, but that depends on also if it is a long-term or a short-term assignment, but normally we, the, the partners don't really work for money, normally. It depends, of course, eh? but uh, they, 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 it's, it's, it's usually not the most important uh, priority uh, they, they they can do it with a little less and have more fun or more development developing more their skills or their yeah or pursuing the their, their interests i think the problem there and it might be different for the foreign office but packages are getting more and more tight from clients nowadays so they 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 need to 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 work um and especially now with covid and things like that um i think we'll find that everybody's being globally affected and they, they're not going to be the same assignments where people are throwing money at, at things. So I think that dual income is very important. Yeah, it depends really on what kind of career you are and exactly. especially for young uh, expats, they get not so uh, huge uh, packages sometimes exactly. or expats who decide to leave on their own. And uh, you're not always sent out and they they want to do it and uh, no, you see it more and more that, uh, that it is necessary and also especially the double income comes and that's an aspect that I think it's very important if you go back home that the double income is important. So then it's very important that during your period abroad that you uh, continue to develop your professional skills and uh, or, or you you develop them in another way or in the same direction that's, that you did something that I experienced myself. Uh, and what I was very uh, what you were of when we moved from Paris to Geneva, and I, I knew that after Geneva we would go back to Brussels. Mm -hmm. After not uh, working so many uh, years, that that it would be a problem. And I absolutely wanted to work also coming back to Brussels, so I started to do voluntary work 100% just to develop my professional career, mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah. my professional mm -hmm. skills, because I'm going back. I knew the double income was important, but also I wanted to work also. Mm -hmm. So this is also that you sometimes have to think about the long-term process. Where, where do I want to go? Uh, is this a, a kind of expatriation for the rest of our life? That's, I think, in very few careers you have this, like in the diplomacy. But uh, if you are in a private business, you, you don't know how many assignments you will get. Mm -hmm. No. It can be very. Different. I think, as you said, as you said, uh, we're, we're we're far too independent as a generation to to be relying on on the other half to 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 pay for everything. You know, you, you want to be able to buy that new handbag and with your yeah. <laughs> go and ask somebody for it. And, and also, we have, of course, divorces. Also, people who divorce. Yes. Yeah. So also, you have Absolutely. to think like, what, what happens if there is a divorce. Then I'll have yeah. to go to the to job yeah. market and. Yeah, or death. I mean, that's happened as well. People, people passing away on assignment. It's well, it's horrible. Yeah, but it happens. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, quite a lot of things to think about, it. and all these things we we question. So we put all these aspects and in, uh, in, on the table. We give no answers. We just put the, the right questions, I think, on the table. 
and it's for the reader of the book to see what question is for me important and where can I find my answer at this specific time in my life in this place. So it's a self-help book. The person who is reading the book can go through it. Of course, maybe this person will need a coach afterwards. That's possible. You can always take a coach to go further into it. But quite a lot of people can manage actually very well with just a self-help book. We don't all need posting, uh, coaching, but some do. Some are better off with a coach. So it's very personal how, how, you, how you live this. Absolutely. I think it's, it's very easy once, once you start trying to work things out in your head to, to end up going round and round in circles and just having some sort of structure to, to follow and, and um, you know, to try and find what really does matter makes a huge difference because oftentimes um, even writing things out for yourself, uh, just ordering your thoughts will already give you the answer that you couldn't work out just while mulling it over mentally. Um, so it's absolutely, it's a hugely valuable tool in that regard. I don't know if we have any other questions, Dave? Yeah, well, just to follow up on what, what Karin uh, said, indeed, uh, with the help of, uh, of a good book, uh, and uh, and uh, every case is individual and different anyway. Uh, you do not always need a coach. Um, but I, I trust that uh, you find peer-to-peer -peer, uh, groups uh, of trailing spouses talking amongst themselves very useful too, uh, because they can share experiences and and, uh, and, and uh, ways to go forward and, and share their networks. And, and NetExpat is also active on that side, uh, uh, Sam, I think to remember uh, for the expats that, uh, that you take care of. Thank you, Dave. I was going to say one the, uh, an advantage of working with a coach is that you, they bring that local element that you don't have as a foreigner when they arrive. So they help with the network, they help with the, how you interview successfully in that host country, how you write your CV so that it is adapted to the, the host country, uh, career guidance. So it's not just about thinking of your career and what you want to take away. It's actually benefiting from a, a local career coach that can really help you through the different steps of, of applying for a job abroad, which is not easy. Very true. Absolutely. I, I agree. For most people do uh, get a lot of support from coaches. Yeah. So uh, most yeah. people I do say, from, go for a coach. If you get uh, stuck, if you don't find your way, it's, it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. but not everybody is willing to do that. And not everybody has financial uh, means of, of getting uh, Getting. So I always hope that the uh, employer will offer coaching to the partners because I think as an employer you really need this. Uh, this is res your responsibility. You send That's out families, uh, so you don't only send out to the expats, but all uh, the whole family. And if you want that expat to be happy, do something for the partner. Absolutely. And this is one way of giving a support package in one way or another. And a, so, and a huge return on investment as well, because we all know how... We need Sorry. both. And coaching yeah. and book. We need both. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. God, no, I'm not here to preach for net expat. Absolutely not. You, you, you were right. Um, the, 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 the both go very well together. It's very much uh, everything you, you said. But I think, as you said as well, the return in, in investment for clients is enormous, because when you consider how expensive it is to send somebody abroad, whether it's the, the schooling, the housing, the moving, the immigration, and then it all goes pear shaped because the family doesn't integrate. Uh, you know, fortunately, clients are recognizing that and, and investing to be able to, to avoid that kind of situation. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. Do we have any further comments? Because I, uh, I think we're closing. Well, we've, 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 come to our hour um, and uh, it's been a really good chat actually I think uh, it's yeah. been a really good se session mm -hmm. two thumbs up from Dave for those on uh, just on speak of you um, yes so thank you Garin thank you Marie and uh, thank you also Sam for all the insights and, and figures it's been uh, really enlightening and um, 
Yeah, it's been great. I, our next meeting is on December 1st. That's our official members meeting. Unfortunately, it will also be via Zoom. Um, but we'll be talking about Brexit. Joy Ooh. of joy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I would like to add one small thing. The book also exists in Dutch. Not yet in French. Ah. We don't know if we're going to do it, but it exists in Dutch. Hmm. Yeah.